Greetings. Today, in a little different format, we are going to discuss conjugate acid-base pairs. We've been talking about acids and bases quite a bit. So now we're going to focus on identifying the acid, the conjugate acid-base pairs. Now, why is this important? It seems like it's kind of random at this point. Well, it's not. Uh, because later on we're going to be talking about equilibrium, and this is, uh, becomes important. We need to be able to identify those acid-base pairs. Besides, those of you that go on to AP Chem will need uh, some of these skills as well. All right, so there are two definitions that we know acids by, our Hedius definitions and the bronsted laurie definition. We have already discussed very briefly both of these when we introduced acids. But now, we are going to focus on the bronsted lori definition. And here's the definition, very simple. Acids are proton donors, bases are proton acceptors. So, it's pretty simple to be able to pick them out, because we know that an acid is going to have one more proton than its conjugate base. And a base is going to have one less proton than its conjugate acid. But let's apply that. When we have the dissociation of a ionic compound or a, an acid, let's say the dissociation of an acid, uh, for example, here we have HF yields H plus, of course, AQ plus F minus AQ. But what happens to that H plus? That H plus becomes attached to a water molecule, becoming H3O plus, the hydronium ion. Same reaction written with that in mind. HF, H2O, notice that the hydrogen ion, or the proton, because it is just an ion, when we say it's a, an, an ion, it's a lost this electron, so it goes H2O two plus, two o to H3O plus, and that is the conjugate, this is a conjugate acid base pair as these two are conjugate acid base pairs. So let's mark them so that you are aware of which one's which. They must only differ by one proton. So we have to find the pair that only differs by one proton. So here, let's pair them together. This one differs from this one by only one proton. So this would be the acid, and F minus would be its conjugate base. Here we have another pair, H2O to H3O plus. They differ only by one proton, therefore this is, acids are proton donors, Therefore, this would be the acid, and this would be its conjugate base. Now, let's look at this reaction over here. We have H2CO3, and that's our pair there because it only differs by one proton, one less proton, one less H+. And then we have, hardly have any room here, but... These two differ by one proton as well, H minus, I'm sorry, OH minus to H2O. Think of HOH, it's missing one proton, one H plus. All right, so now these two would be, this is the acid, and this would be its conjugate base. And for this one over here, they differ by one proton. Remember that acids are proton donors, meaning this one could donate a proton. This one could accept a proton. So this would be the acid, and this would be the base. And we should pair them really acid, conjugate, base, alternate, uh, alternating. All right, this one over here, we have HCO3 and... CO3, this differs only one by one H, so therefore this would be the acid, and this would be its conjugate base. And over here the difference is 
Again, one proton, so therefore this would be the acid, and this would, this would be its base. Before I move on to that, this last problem, I want to point out two things. One is that the acid-base pairs, the acid and its conjugate base, differ not only by the number of protons or hydrogens, uh, for, for simplicity, not, not only the number of hydrogens, but it also differs in, there's a difference in charge. Uh, let's take an example, for instance, here. This entity over here, H2CO3, is a neutral substance. However, when it loses the one proton, notice it's now one H, it loses the one proton, it also became negatively charged. Because it was neutral, now it loses one positive charge, therefore becoming more negative in comparison. Same goes for OH minus, for instance. All right. This one is the acid. Let's take it coming this way. Loses its proton. Therefore, this entity becomes more negative because you have lost the H plus charge. This one looks kind of odd. I have water plus water, but what I'm trying I'm trying to show you one property here. If I have H2O to OH, this differs by one proton, therefore this would be the acid, and this would be its conjugate base. And over here, these two differ by one proton. Only this one has the proton, uh, the extra proton, X acid, and this would be its conjugate base. So I have an acid, a base, and then the conjugate acid and the conjugate base. Now, what's important about this? The important thing about this is that notice that water here is an acid, but water here is a base. How is that possible? Well, water is a substance that we call an amphoteric substance. And that means that it can act as an, both as an acid and a base. And it depends on what it's reacting with. There are other amphoteric substances as well. Notice that in this reaction, HCO3- minus is acting as an acid. And in this reaction, over here, it's acting as a base. So that's also an amphoteric substance. Well, that is all, and uh, now that's left to do for you to get some practice back in the classroom. See you later.